Hello, my name is Jack Zmanski, and I'll be presenting on the short-term influence of artificial intelligence on learning. So in order to draw a connection between learning and artificial intelligence, we have to see what particular forms of AI that students use. And the primary one that students use is ChatGPT, the chatbot. Um, on average, there's 100 million users per week. Um, and in a different section of education, 99% of students use, say, they cram for exams. Um, and why this research is important is because if we can manage a connection between using AI and cramming um, to perform better on tests, we can all benefit from these different areas. So for a little bit of context, um, AI is becoming increasingly prevalent in nearly every sector of life. Um, for example, businesses say that 64% of them um, have increased product productivity after using um, AI. Um, and, and as shown in this graph, it can help with um, targeting, man targeting marketing, smart supply chains, customer experience and support, um, to name a few. Um, and on the education side, cramming is an ineffective method of knowledge acquisition and retention, um, which can lead to increased levels of stress and make it harder to take in information. <coughs> uh, lastly, uh, the connection between the three, or between the two, is that AI can be used to lower stress levels of learning and increase productivity. Um, so a little gap is formed here where we can see how using AI to learn information faster while also reducing the stress of cramming. Um, so that's what I'm uh, beginning to study. Um, and during my literature review, I analyzed a couple sources that have used um, similar uh, methods already. Um, for example, a law, a law school had students that um, evidently scored, scored higher on their final exams after using AI throughout their uh, studying process. Um, and this um, actually balanced out the uh, maximum and minimum scores, so everyone on average performed better. Um, and it's also used in medical field exams where the chatbot itself was able to pass a medical test by 5%. Um, so if the chatbot itself can help, can pass, then it can definitely help um, students perform better as well. Um, and then I'm gonna move to the perception of AI in which there is um, definitely positive and negative viewpoints. <laughs> First, for the positive one, um, researchers have shown how balancing AI and um, student work can form trust and how there's a necessary um, management between them, but if you balance the right amount of AI with your work, um, you're more likely to find success in school with this healthy tech school relationship. Um, also, there's uh, concepts like smart homework in which uh, students can use AI to complete assignments and learn, um, which also has uh, been proven to reduce anxiety. Um, and now on the negative perception of AI, um, there are viewpoints that say that security and privacy are at an issue because you're giving a lot of information sometimes to a personal, um, personal uh, information and uh, logins and stuff like that. And it might increase laziness if instead of uh, doing the work yourself, you plug it into a chatbot. Um, and then there's also an even more dystopian view where it says that if, stu if all humans throughout history have been able to accumulate their knowledge into this chatbot, um, we're not really sure what it says about uh, if it's going to overtake us potentially. Um, and as shown in this um, graph, there's a lot of people recently um, that are more concerned than excited. Um, however, there are definitely some optimistic about the use of AI. <clears throat> so that brings me to my research question. Um, how can the usage of AI directly impact the performance of students on tests? And can students use AI to succeed on topics they know very little about in short amount of time, aka cramming? So my method is an experimental design with cluster sampling. So in order for my to form my clusters or my groups, I've taken a group of around 25 people from each grade level and surveyed the entire classroom based off um, the homogeneity of each class um, within the room. Uh, for example, AP government, in which um, it's a class that only juniors take, um, so I went with uh, groups like that. Then I asked for a consent form to be filled out for every student under 18 to preserve um, uh, ethical um, considerations. And then in terms of my method, I simulated a cramming session in which I gave students um, a packet of information and told them to learn for 10 minutes um, and take notes on it before a test, and half will be assigned to use, half were assigned to use ChatGPT and half weren't. Um, this is a relatively unexplored topic, 
Um, however, experimental designs seem to be the best for me because I have the control group and my experimental group, so it's a distinct difference between the performance of each of them. Um, and I needed efficiency because I didn't have much time to do a longitudinal study over many years of using AI. Um, not to mention that AI is constantly evolving, so we're really unable to gauge it at any exact moment. Um, and no short-term experiments have been done on research like this, um, which is kind of what I explained in my gap, where um, there have been studies where people um, have used their entire class with partnership with AI, um, but in this case, I'm kind of doing a cramming session. So my resources, um, I had a Purdue information packet about the Neolithic era um, to test reading and understanding skills about um, an unknown topic, which I'll explain in a bit. And then I made a quiz off the materials from the packet, which had 10 questions um, in four different categories uh, for reading comprehension, image-based questions, author's perspective, and critical thinking, um, which I'll show in a second. And um, each category has been um, Questions have been made with research supported definitions of each category. Uh, for example, these are two of my questions. Um, for a reading comprehension, where it strictly uh, uses co um, content from the passage and just asks for a little summary or a, a bit of knowledge from it. And then an author's pers perspective question, where it directly addresses the author and what uh, they believe about the material. So when I conducted my method, I chose to use these because like I mentioned, it's a widely unknown topic. Um, the Neolithic era is not taught at, at uh, the school I was using um, because there's no world history classes there. Um, and I, I used specific questions which would not rely on previous knowledge. Um, like I said, there's some specifically from the passage like the image base, which uh, prior knowledge would be unlikely to help. Um, this packet was eight pages and 2,300 words and the average high school reading speed is 200 to 300 words per minute. So students were uh, definitely able to um, get through this in the 10 minute a lot of time. And then I mainly use it so I could see how students could test um, unlearned topics and how they attack it with and without using AI. And as I mentioned, the experimental uh, design shows a distinct difference between the two groups. Um, for a quick check on the uh, uh, a reading level. Um, many of the students I, I uh, surveyed take the SAT or will take the SAT. Um, and the Purdue notes packet that I used um, shows to have similar reading levels, um, which it says uh, seventh grade reading level for the Purdue packet and sixth grade for an SAT. So it's very similar in terms of uh, uh, difficulty of reading. Uh, like I said, I have ethical considerations in place. These are completely anonymous quizzes. Um, no names and there's consent forms, but I just have basic um, information about what class they're in to provide uh, levels for the data so I can split them up between the class. So here's my data. Um, I highlighted the AI group in yellow for a better distinction. Um, I had uh, 98 total students respond with a participation rate of 93%, and this was likely due to uh, me asking some of the teachers to provide a couple of participation points um, to uh, join my study. And the students are roughly split between uh, control and AI, uh, that being 51 AI, 47 non-AI. And then here's what my data looked like. Um, I took all their scores from the 10 question test. I split them up by um, total score, um, and then I split them up by category with the, uh, the uh, content, the passage base, the author's perspective, and the critical thinking. Um, and then I provided percentages for each so I could see a, a more distinct difference because they were not exactly even, so the fractions would not be the most effective way of uh, comparing them. So some of my results that I found most interesting is that overall there's a 4.8% difference between the group's score, um, and that being the uh, non-AI group, aka the control group, performed 4.8% uh, better. And after I performed a statistical significance test on this, it produced a p-value of 0.0497, and that means that there is statistical evidence to conclude that um, there is a difference between these scores. So it showed that there is significant evidence of the non-AI group performing better. Um, in, a, in a more specific category, the critical thinking category, um, there is a 5.5% 5, 5 difference between groups in which uh, the non-AI group performed better. 
but since there were less of a population for this, there was no specific evidence. It's just something to point out. Um, so from our discussion, I also noticed that freshmen performed the worst and that the score increased with age. And this is supported by um, uh, graphs and research by um, uh, various authors that show that uh, with, with more crystallized intelligence over time, uh, the reading scores and the uh, scoring on standardized tests in increases overall. And this uh, source says that 12 months of additional age, aka uh, one year older, would in improve your percentile uh, score on a standardized test by 8 to 10%. Uh, like I said, only the total scores provided statistically significant evidence because there were so many, um, that being around 100 students taking 10 different questions. So there were a lot of data points for that, but for the other categories, there were not big enough differences or not large enough sample sizes to produce statistically significant evidence, but there were noticeable uh, differences like I mentioned. Uh, reading comprehension was the highest score for all the students and critical thinking was the lowest. Um, and this can be explained um, by ChatGPT's kind of motto, that their text models are effective at producing uh, text with high levels of coherence and accuracy. So students would be able to get a very good sense of what the passage is by simply plugging it into ChatGPT, thus being able to perform better on the reading comprehension. So some limitations of mine, uh, like I said, I have a small sample of data, only 98 students out of an entire high school. Um, and that out of all of the high school students in America or the world. Um, I also didn't take any demogra demographic information into account. However, there were other studies that um, kind of detailed the usage rate of certain races uh, over others, um, but none too specific. Uh, and also, like I mentioned, there's the changing state of AI where it constantly gets updated every week. Um, so we're really unable to gauge it at any specific moment because it's constantly changing. I only used one chatbot. Like I said, ChatGPT was the most primarily used by students, but certainly others are being used and others are being created. So there is further research to be done on different chatbots. And then my, I had a slightly undetailed scoring format. I chose my method because it would be easy for me to manage um, simply taking the total scores and the category scores, but I was considering using partial points or uh, a more detailed test that showed like free response where it would show like more detailed knowledge that the students have, but that just wasn't very effective for the time I had. So my conclusion, um, overall in very short term cramming sessions, there is no evidence that suggests that ChatGPT produces better results in scores. Um, and there is no statistically significant evidence that ChatGPT is being better at reading comprehension, uh, that being the students that use ChatGPT, ChatGPT did not perform better on reading comprehension, um, although the data does show there's a slight positive difference, which is a contrast to what ChatGPT advertises as well as established studies about getting better grades and performing better using primarily AI. So that's what I found out near my sources. Thanks, Jack. The, uh, the panel has a few questions for you, so I'll go ahead and do the first one. Uh, so how did you review the methods of other scholars in this area to help inform your method? I know you did an experiment. You talked a little bit about your motivation for that. Was that at all connected to the literature that you read? So like I mentioned, the established research is mainly longitudinal studies where students would uh, be partnered with AI systems for entire semesters or years, and their performance in the class would be studied. But since I wanted to um, do sh more short-term, like uh, performance on singular tests, I thought that an experiment would be, would be better um, because um, just using a control group versus an experimental group might show a, um, a distinct difference. But had I had more time um, or more uh, of a research group, I might be able to um, analyze how it could happen over time. Okay, terrific. All right. Um, so I know you touched on this a little bit um, in your implications section, but um, this is a particularly relevant topic for schools, right? So what are the real world implications and consequences or consequences for the instrument findings? Like how do you see this shape if people were to 
So I see many students um, from my peers um, say that ChatGPT, simply using that will make you perform better or it's like kind of a cheat code to perform better on tests. But as my research showed, there isn't really a distinct difference if, and um, even that the control group performed better by simply looking over just a packet of notes for 10 minutes. So it might contrast some existing viewpoints about how ChatGPT is used already, um, but also it can help um, show that if it, it can be used differently, um, that if students want to use, or if they want to perform better, they might consider using different forms of AI or different uh, uh, prompts in ChatGPT. Sir, I understand the question, so I'm going to ask you to explain the question of what it means to you and what you did in your research. But the question is, um, how did you handle the uncertainty of the research project? So, what is uncertainty for you in this project, and then how did you handle it? So, my main uncertainty is kind of how uh, AI itself is created and uh, People, like I said, a lot of students use AI, but it's really uncertain as to how the inner workings of it um, translate to uh, like give out a prompt. And I think students don't know that, and that was kind of a big uncertainty for me because I didn't really have a sense of what, it, what ChatGPT was actually doing for the students. So I couldn't really uh, end up having a conclusion on that, but that was, some, that was definitely something to explore in the future about what specifically ChatGPT does better. Um, I know it, um, it advertises that reading comprehension is better, but that wasn't shown in the short term, at least. So that's kind of an uncertainty, especially as it keeps evolving. 